Hello guys, picture yourself at the car dealership trying to buy a used car. The seller first show you the expensive cars. You feel bad, but they are out of your league. Just when you think you're going to go home empty handed, the seller tells you, Hey, I like you. Let me show you some special ones. And he shows you the more affordable cars. Hey, they look like a bargain. In reality, all the cars in the dealership are overpriced. By showing you first the expensive cars, the dealer has set in you an anchor, influencing your perception of the value of the cars in the lot. Why do we rely heavily upon the first piece of information we receive? Today, in Deciding How to Decide, we will talk about the anchoring bias. And what exactly is it? The anchoring bias is the tendency to rely heavily on the first piece of information we are given about a topic. This happens even when the information is not relevant for the topic at hand. Let me ask you a question. Was Mahatma Gandhi older or younger than 140 when he died? Don't laugh. Younger, right? Let me ask you another question. How old was Mahatma Gandhi when he died? These two questions were asked in a classic experiment by two German psychologists. Half of the participants were asked the 140 years old question just like you. Everybody said younger, of course. When asked the second question, the average response was 67. The other half of the participants were asked if Gandhi was older or younger than 9 when he died. Everybody said older, of course. When asked the second question, the average response was 50. 67, the ones that were exposed to the 140 year anchor, as ridiculous as it sounds. 50, the ones that were exposed to the 9 year old anchor, as ridiculous as it sounds. Do you see the effect of the initial anchor? Anchors matter. By the way, Gandhi died at 78. And how does the anchoring bias work? First, we get prime. We tend to remember better the first thing we learned about a concept or thing than what we learned later. Imagine that you're in a street market interested in buying a funky craft. The vendor just told you the price. You wouldn't realize it, but this first price, the anchor, will influence you a lot. Second, we stick to the anchor. Our brain starts looking for reasons to accept this first price. It takes less energy to accept the set price than to find reasons to reject it. It's hard to de-anchor. Third, we insufficiently adjust from the anchor. Imagine that you think the price of the craft is too high and you want a bargain. Your counter offer will be close to the anchor unless you deliberately fight it. You want $100? I'll give you $12. Hard to do this, right? Most of us will offer $85.90. Imagine this. You just landed a job at a big company and you're negotiating your salary. The HR woman is making you an offer of X thousand dollars per year. Considering the role and your previous experience, you know this is a really low offer. Do you make a counter proposal of X plus 70%? No, you don't. With X as an anchor or starting point, you will probably ask X plus 10%, maybe 20%. If accepted, you will be satisfied that you got more than what they initially offered. The HR woman used the anchoring bias against you. She strike first and she strike hard. Big takeaway. The person who opens the negotiations and sets the anchor has a big advantage. And why is this important? The anchoring bias leads us to poor decisions given that we cling to values when it's irrational to do so. It's everywhere, not only in negotiations. Businesses are anchoring us all the time with their price strategies. What is the fair price of a pair of sneakers? It's full or discounted price. Original price, $50. Just today, you pay $30. i will take it right now. Let's talk about planning. Once we set an initial plan for completing a project, we can become anchored. If things go astray, we might be reluctant to update our plan, even if 
it becomes clear that we will need to adjust the time or the budget. And what can we do about it? Try fighting it by coming up with reasons why that anchor is not valid. Think about a fair price for the car and tell yourself why the price asked by the seller is too high. This will give you the confidence to make a reasonable counter offer to the dealer or to tell him to forget about it. Instead of thinking about a single price, try to think about a range of prices for the car. What is the maximum price you will be willing to pay? The anchor by all means. Now a disclaimer. Remember, this video is not the last word regarding the anchoring bias. Its goal is to ignite your interest in this topic so you do your own research. For example, do you think mood, personality, and experience in the topic at hand influences the anchoring bias? Send us your feedback so we can continue this conversation. Time to go. See you next time. Thank you.